Now, you might be wondering what I'm doing in the rush hour traffic here on the M4. But I'm looking for a different type of commuter entirely, and it's the red kite. Hundreds of them make their way every day from the hills just to the north down into Reading. The kite population was re-established in 1989 using birds from Spain. And they've been quick to discover that living within striking distance of a human population of more than 300,000 has some distinct advantages. These beautiful and elegant birds are some of nature's finest opportunists. And they travel into Reading because they've realised that some of the residents are leaving food out for them. John Vincent lives in the suburbs of Reading. And like about half of us in Britain, he regularly feeds birds. Three years ago, he started putting out tidbits for the kites. You see them already congregated in the sky. What is it you're feeding them on? A little bit of beef and chicken, sometimes a bit of bacon. You know, anything that we got going spare, they have it. That sounds better than what I get for dinner. <laughs> How many birds are we talking? 20, 30. In one sitting? In one sitting, yeah. They're coming in from all angles. Well, let's give it a go, shall we? Yeah, come let's on. Let's get then. some food out there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. The bird's reintroduction to the Chilterns has been a soaring success with an estimated 1,000 breeding pairs now in residence. Come on, then. And it looks like John's food has attracted a respectable number of them today. So there's four, five, six in the sky already, seven in the sky already, and we're feeding them, what, 12 foot in, in front of us here? And it's like they're expecting it. These are meant to be skittish, scared birds. He's whistling them down. And they're coming. Will they land? No, no, no. They're scavengers, and they're just... And you can see where they've picked it up once they finish, because all the grass has been raked up. Oh, I see. So, so the, the motion would be a swooping motion. Swoop down. They're such wonderful creatures. I only hope they come close enough for us to get a good look. Do you know, right, as you, you're watching them fly over, and you see their, their grace and their beauty and their size. When they're coming right down low into the garden like this, you really get an idea of how big they are. And as well as their size and their grace, they've got that forked tail, which really separates them and makes them very easy to recognise amongst other birds of prey. Despite the impressive number of kites circling around the garden... A couple over there, going up there. None are brave enough to take a star turn in front of the camera today. Come on, kites, don't make me have to start making excuses for you. We've come inside simply because having the film crew there, I think, has maybe put them off. We are absolutely surrounded by red kites. I can't believe the numbers. I've not seen them in this sort of number before. Let's keep our fingers crossed. But it looks like John's tasty morsels just aren't working their usual magic. Luckily, our friends at Springwatch have had more success. The kite's no-show today isn't about to put John off feeding them. And he's not alone. Research by Professor Mark Fellows from Reading University has discovered that almost 10% of households in the area have fed the kites. That's great for them, but with so many other native bird species in decline, is it all good news? Here in Reading, it's all about feeding red kites. Now, surely that in itself has an adverse effect on the number of small birds in the garden. Well, the kites seem to have no effect whatsoever on the small birds in, in your garden. They don't generally predate those sorts of things. In the city, in the town, really what they're looking for is the food that people are providing. They come in, take that, and disappear off. What about just scaring the local birds? They're a big, strong-looking bird. Surely that'd put the frighteners up me if I was a robin <laughs> nesting in a back garden somewhere. Well, it's interesting, actually, just on personal observation. There's red kites flying over us at the moment. No difference. The birds aren't responding to the tool. They know it's not a threat. 
If the thriving kite population isn't affecting the number of other birds, then what is? Mark's research has shown that human kindness is actually part of the problem. How on earth can feeding the birds possibly be detrimental to their numbers? During the breeding season, if we're attracting in predators like magpies or grey squirrels, they come to the food and then they forage around the area looking for other food that they can eat. And sometimes they're just going to come across nests. They'll find nests of blackbirds or song thrush. And so they'll come in, take the eggs, and that, of course, will end up meaning that that is a failed breeding attempt. Mark isn't trying to clip the wings of Britain's devoted bird feeders. He just wants us to proceed with caution. So if you were to summarise how and when to feed garden birds, what would your advice be? Uh, my advice would be to feed throughout the year, apart perhaps from during the breeding season, where you might want to think twice. Provide a big diversity of natural foods. I would always advise that people put cages around their feeders, largely because it excludes things like magpies and squirrels. And if you're feeding magpies and squirrels, you're building their populations up, which will help them be predators later. We have all these nature reserves around the country, and one person manages these big nature reserves. Every householder is a reserve manager in their back garden. It means that you and I can make a difference in our own home. And it's that homegrown stewardship that has helped the local population of kites climb to such dizzy heights. It really does show that if we all pull together, conservation projects like this really can make a difference. But conservation is about so much more than looking after the big headline-grabbing birds. It's important that we take care in the way we feed all our native species, especially in harsh winter conditions.